Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today, guys, we are going to be analyzing the company Amgen. This actually was brought up by Michael Brown, where he pretty much just said, can you do a video on Amgen? Now, I have done this company one other time, but it has been a while. And also, they actually recently just had their earnings. So I figured, you know what? Let's actually reanalyze this company one more time and let's see if maybe we would like to buy it at the current share price. So with that said guys, let's get started with this analysis. Now I did mention that they just had earnings and they had it earlier this month on the 4th of August. And as you can see right here, their EPS normalized actual was actually a beat by 32 cents. However, their EPS gap actual was a miss by 83 cents, which is actually pretty big. However, when it came to their revenue, the revenue actually beat by 68.13 million dollars so that's actually looking fairly okay when it comes to this quarter's earnings we'll see how they do when it comes to q3 but nonetheless guys let's come over here to the dividend summary amgen pays a really big juicy dividend and by the way i fully own this company and i'm going to show you guys exactly the kind of price that i was buying this company at because Today's price is not at all what I paid for it. But nonetheless, guys, dividend yield of 3.09%, which ends up being $1.94 per share. So that's already fairly good for an annual payout of $7.76. Payout ratio, not in regards to the free cash flow, it is 41.27%, which is okay, I guess you could say. We'll take a look at this in regards to the free cash flow in just one second. A five-year CAGR of 11.24, so that's already really good. 10 consecutive dividend growth years and their ex dividend day unfortunately passed as of August 17th. Sorry, I wish I could have made this video earlier, but last week's earnings was just all over the place. There was a lot to do. So I'm sorry for that. But nonetheless, ex dividend day did pass as of August 17th. Payout date is actually going to be on September 8th. And of course, they pay their dividends quarterly. Let us now come into the calculator, guys. We got the ticker symbol of AMGN, market cap of $134.2 billion with a PE of 21.25. So based off of this PE, it's telling me that it's slightly overpriced for my liking. I like to buy it, or at least I like to take a look at it further. If it's at around like a 20 times trading, right, 20 PE or less. But that doesn't mean that a share price of $250 is actually a bad price for all we know it may actually be a fairly decent price now looking at this dividend at seven dollars and 76 cents in regards to their current shares outstanding they pay out guys every single year 4.15 billion dollars and then if we take a look at this in regards to the five-year average free cash flow they're still left with 5.4 billion dollars and doing the same math with last year's free cash flow they're left with 4.23 billion dollars these payout ratios come up to be 49.53 for the last year's free cash flow and 43.35 for the five-year average so overall it's actually not too shabby it is significantly below my 60 percent cutoff which is pretty much just telling me that they're still able to cover this dividend now guys before we move on to the actual fundamentals full disclosure again i actually do own this company i will show all of you guys how much i own and what price i was actually buying at uh, when this thing actually fell a couple months ago, I believe last year, actually it was a year to date almost, when this thing actually fell. So I'm going to show you guys that. But before we do anything, remember when it comes to pharmaceutical companies, guys, make sure you take a look at their pipeline. See which drugs are in the first, second, and third phase and which ones are out. The ones that are out also see how many of them are about to be out of patent and then when. Because if those come out of patent pretty soon, that means that they're probably going to lose a big chunk of revenue when it comes to that drug. So again, just remember to take a look at that. Now let's actually start with the fundamentals. And we're actually going to start off pretty decent with the net income. We got five years ago of almost $2 billion to one year ago of $5.9 billion, increase of 198%. And, you know, this actually, it's okay. It is an increase on the five year, but this graph doesn't scream too much of anything for me, right? Five years ago to four years ago, massive jump. But from four years ago to one year ago, they have been slowly decreasing this, which is kind of sad, honestly. Hopefully, once we get this year's, hopefully it'll be higher than $8.4 billion. But as it stands, if it's less than $5.89 billion and this $2 billion from five years ago gets pushed one to the left, 
and we no longer see it, this would actually be a decreasing net income. So for that reason, guys, I'm actually going to give this, I'm not gonna give it a really low score because I mean, it is still in the positive, but as you can see, it is decreasing pretty consistently. So I'm gonna give it guys like a 60% or so. Coming now to the free cash flow, the most important of all the profit metrics, because this is the one that companies use to essentially pay for everything. The company uses this to pay off that dividend, to buy back shares, pay down debt, make acquisitions, and to just overall grow the company. And it's unfortunate to see this, but well, free cash flow for this is not doing too good. Five years ago, it was 10.5 billion to one year ago of 8.4 billion. That is a decrease on the five year of 20% with a five year average of $9.6 billion. And again, every single year, guys, it has just been consistently decreasing, which is kind of disappointing. I mean, yeah, you had three years ago to two years ago, it did go up. And from five years ago to four years ago, it slightly went up, but the general trend, it is going down. And something also that's not really good when it comes to this is, if we actually come over here to the actual cash from operations and capital expenditures, we can see that the capital expenditures are roughly remaining the same. It's actually the cash from operations that that's somewhat wavering a little bit. So that's unfortunate to see. But overall, guys, this is a decreasing graph. I'm gonna have to give it a really low score because it is just decreasing. And for that, I'm gonna give it like essentially a 25%. Now coming over here to the revenue we got five years ago of almost $23 billion to one year ago of almost $26 billion. That is an increase, guys, of 13.7% on the five year. And this actually doesn't look too bad. Now, unfortunately, it is not consistently increasing. We did have from four years ago to three years ago, it did dip a little bit going from 23.7 billion to 23.36 billion. But nonetheless, they did pick it up the following year and then increase it again the following year after that. Overall, I'm actually going to give this a fairly high score of like a 95% or actually even higher than that because the decrease from four years ago to three years ago, it was only by around $400 million. So I'm actually going to give this like a 97%. Coming now to the total assets minus the total liabilities, what this one pretty much just shows us guys is if the company is able to cover their liabilities with their assets. And unfortunately, well, currently guys, they're at $2.4 billion. And as you can see right here, this graph does not look pretty. It is consistently decreasing year over year. And in fact, if we take a look at their total assets and total liabilities right over here, we can see that their total assets have actually gone down, believe it or not, while their liabilities is actually actually going up slightly, right? Their total assets went from 79.9 billion five years ago to then 59.3 billion uh, as of today. So that's really unfortunate to see. And this pretty much just shows this entire fall when it comes to this difference. Average total assets is around $65 billion. Average liabilities is $54 billion. And doing this difference, we get $11 billion. Overall guys, I actually have to give this a fairly, fairly low score at around like a 20% or so, just because this is consistently going down. And now taking a look at the cash flow year over year minus the liabilities year over year, because again, cash flow is the one that companies use to pay off their liabilities. We essentially get this difference and normally what I find is that most companies are in the negatives when it comes to this. It's very, very rare that companies are actually like in the positive when it comes to this. But nonetheless, guys, as it currently stands as of one year ago, they're at negative $46 billion. And well, within the past five years, they have just gone absolutely nowhere. They have gone a little bit down in the red, but not by much, only by around like $2 billion or so. And you can see here from five to three years ago, they were bringing it up and then COVID happened and then it just got further and further in the red after that. So that's unfortunate to see. But regardless, if we take a look at the average cash flow minus the average total liabilities, we get around negative 43.8 billion dollars. I'm actually gonna give this guys a better score than that of the assets minus liabilities, but it's still not too good. I'm not actually gonna give this at around like a 45%. And now when it comes to their shares outstanding, the metric that people tend to overlook and it's very, very underrated. This one guys pretty much 
tells us if the company is diluting you as the investor. If you hold this company, you want a company to be buying back shares, especially by the way, if they have a dividend, which they do have a massive dividend of $7.76. So it's a really a boon if this company were to buy back shares, because not only does that give you a bigger piece of the company, but the fact that they have less shares out there, this means that they don't have to pay out as much of a dividend as they used to. So it's an overall good thing that they should be buying back shares. And this is amazing because Amgen is buying back an amazing amount of shares. Five years ago of 722.2 million shares to today, guys, of 535 million shares. That is a massive decrease, guys, on the five year of almost 26%. That is beautiful to see. And from the previous year to the current year, looking at one year ago, 558.3 million shares to today guys a 534.9 you round up to 535 million shares that is a decrease of 4.19 percent absolutely beautiful i don't even think there was a single year where they issued so that's really really good i'm gonna give this guys a 100 percent because i mean it's just perfect in every single year. And when it comes to the cash and equivalents, guys, they currently hold $5.2 billion with an average of $6 billion. So let us do a quick recap when it comes to this company. We got the net income 60%, free cash flow 25%, revenue 97%, Assets minus liabilities, 20%. Cash flow minus liabilities, 45%. And the shares outstanding at 100% for an overall grade, guys, of 59%. They're probably wondering, this is lower than a 70, it's lower than a 60, why would you buy it? Well, it really just depends as to when you buy it. And when I bought this company, it was at around like the $206. I'm actually going to put a picture right here. It was around $206 at around like this time, I think it was August, end of August, uh, beginning of September or so. And the stock price was just crashing. And it got to the point where I believe it got to sub 200. And that was just dollar cost averaging on the way down. As you can see, I was putting in like $500 in increments. So that's essentially what I did. And the price I got for it was fairly decent. At least I considered fairly decent as to what I was getting when it came to this 59% score. Granted, I did not have this grading system when i did this but nonetheless i did have the fundamentals i did check them out so i figured you know what i i'm okay with a price of around 200 dollars or so so with that said let's actually find out if with the current share price of 250 dollars we would like to buy this company and we're going to use guys this kind of free cash flow we are going to be making three different assumptions using revenue growth predicted share buyback and the required rate of return guys for the revenue growth let us come over here to seeking alpha and we can see that the revenue growth year over year is 3.53 and the revenue growth forward is 2.31 so i like this because they're fairly close to each other i don't like that they're this small but at least they're fairly close to each other so let's actually make some assumptions now Let's say that for the low assumption, we put this at like 2%. Media assumption, let's put this at like 3%. And for the highest assumption, let's put this at 4%. Now for the predicted share buyback, they have been buying back, guys, a lot of shares. Let's look at that one more time. And as you can see, they are buying back on the five-year of almost 26%. And from the previous year to the current year, they're buying back at negative 4.19%. So do I believe that they'll continue to do this at this massive rate of 26% in the next coming years? Probably not. I say a more conservative assumption would be at around like 5% for the low assumption. Let's say 8% for the media assumption and 11% for the highest rosiest assumption. And with that, guys, we get some target share prices. For the low one, we get $166.61. Medium one, we get $177.96. And the highest one, $190.08. Adjusting for debt, we do this by taking the cash equivalents. We add the net debt and then if they have more debt than cash, then the value comes down. If they have more cash and debt, then the value comes up. As you can see, it does come down, guys, to $119.16 for the low assumption, $129.02 for the media assumption, and $139.61 for the highest assumption. Now, adding a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15%. This puts me between the ranges of $101.28 to $113.20. Median assumption, it is $109.67 to $122.57. And for the highest assumption, we get $118.67 to $132.63. Guys, the current share price is $250.86. So, unfortunately, it is telling me that it's really much overpriced right now. now you're probably saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. You bought this at around like 200. This, there's nowhere 200 in this. Well, 
we do have 190. And this is where essentially investing is kind of like an art. Are you willing to pay a premium for a company like this? In my personal opinion, I decided that yes, I am perfectly fine with paying a premium. And I figured that the premium of around like $10 or so for the 190 price, I figured, you know what, that was good enough for me. I'm gonna buy it. So I decided to buy it. And essentially I was fairly correct in buying it at that time, seeing that it is now $250. So just because you overpay for something, guys, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. Because if you're going to overpay for something, but you think think that they'll grow at a pretty good rate in the future, then you might be willing to take that premium on if you know you're probably going to get that in the next couple years back. That is essentially my reasoning as to why I bought it at around like the $206, $200 mark. Am I going to buy it at $250? No way, not going to happen. Am I willing to buy it at around like $200, $199, $196? Sure, why not? Again, that is just the way that I like to invest. These numbers, guys, are not set in stone. They're based off of these assumptions that I have right here. You guys can change this to whatever you want. I have this calculator available for everybody. I recently made a video consolidating all the calculators, and the video also has timestamps consolidating all the calculators and showing you guys exactly where to find all of the numbers. So if there's any questions to that, guys, a link to that video will be in the description below. So please have these calculators. I have this one, the book value one, the revaluation one, and even a dividend tracking sheet. This was in a separate video, but nonetheless, I also have a dividend tracking sheet, which essentially tracks all of my stocks. In fact, I have it right here, Amgen. I have $6,656 invested, about 30.24 shares, and they're gaining me around $58.67. And at the current share price, I am up almost $1,000. So that's actually fairly, fairly good in my personal opinion. Again, have these calculators, guys, and a dividend tracking sheet all for free. All I'm asking for in return is just help me grow my channel like subscribe comment we're really really close to 900 subscribers at a thousand guys i do plan on making a very special video so be on the lookout for that when we finally reach the 1000 hopefully we can do it by the end of the year that would be absolutely awesome but then again guys have these calculators for free really does help like subscribe comment that's really all i'm asking for so now let's take a look at this dividend a little bit further. Let's say that you make the average US income $68,703. Bringing this to the monthly, we get $5,725. And let's say that at the current share price, which again, in accordance to my discounted free cash flow, it is pretty much overpriced. But let's just amuse this a little bit. If you were to put in one month's income into this company, this would get you guys 22.82 shares. And at the current annual dividends per share, this is $177.10 in annual dividends, $44.28 in quarterly dividends, and $14.76 in monthly dividends. So as you can see, it isn't as good as you would like it to be. I would like if it was over 200, but let's actually do something interesting. Let's say that you bought it at around where I bought it, which was at around like $206 or so. Now, looking at this dividend, we can see that for the same amount, guys, this dividend annually, it is $215.67. Quarterly, it is $54 essentially, and monthly of essentially $18. So again, price really does make all the difference. You really want to be able to buy something at a really, really good price because that just means your money will go further. And when it comes to this company, I like it for its dividend. I also like it for their massive share buyback as well. Overall, guys, as I said, I do own Amgen. I actually like this company. Another reason why I decided to buy it is because of that massive share buyback. Seeing that all of their cash flow is going into that, essentially, I pretty much just looked at it like, if they really wanted to, the board could just change from buying back shares to paying down their debts. Meaning that all of that debt issue that they're having might disappear if they decide to do that. So that's why I'm like, eh, it's not that big of a deal in my personal opinion. But that pretty much does it for this video. Like the feel like, comment, subscribe. It really does help it with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out. And be on the lookout for the next stock analysis of video.